The wingback style of blade is one of my favourite designs and it was McGregor that made it famous. While it's still relatively easy to find and buy original sets in America, here in the UK they don't turn up so often. And so in today's video I'll be reviewing and playing a set of the 1983 remakes which are easier to find over here. After reviewing the clubs I'll take a more detailed look at the MT line and then get out on the course with the reviewed clubs. So let's kick things off by looking at the woods which unfortunately aren't by McGregor. I have featured these before so I won't spend too long on them. If you want to look up the, uh, the video uh, the thumbnail was called Value Woods and Irons but if you want to search for it it would be Spark Golf Ball Company. Uh, so these uh, you can see on the top there on the decal long flight and on the sole we can see Cypress Point. So Cypress Point long flight this is the forward these are a polymer head of course the condition of the course at the moment is pretty poor we're in the middle of winter here in the UK so it's very wet um, often cold so I don't like to play actual wooden woods uh, but these make a nice compromise same size as a wood uh, wooden wood but they are obviously made from plastic or polymer shaft bands are true temper pro fit so these would date to the 1960s I have re-gripped these that's the the woods and for the irons we have the very attractive McGregor Tawny M85 and these are the 1983 uh, reissue the first ones came out in 1950 the original uh, M85s and we, as we're aware they've just introduced the M86 uh, which is a, a bit of a, a nod to the lineage um, but the, the latest M86 is a hollow head club foam field so although it looks like a, a classic iron it's really full, full of modern technology so it's got no place on this channel really where we appreciate the, the simpler elements of club design so let's have a look at this club I've got a, a set um, 3 through to sand wedge of these I'm only showing 4, 6, 8 pitching wedge and sand iron here so we've got the 4 iron what I like to call a wing back design, in fact it's generally referred to as a wing back design, it looks like uh, the wings of a bird in flight, a simple pencil line. Uh, Colour chrome refers to the, uh, the face, uh, copper in this instance but they also did black faces as well, uh, a ceramic uh, uh, face which was often referred to as uh, FC, uh, flame ceramic. This one uh, is uh, copper and that's underneath the uh, chrome plating. As with most American clubs of this time, this is a, a, a mild steel head with a uh, chrome finish. Uh, whereas most of British clubs around this time were made from stainless steel. On the hosel there we can see Tor Forged and the serial number. Uh, that will help to identify this particular club. Uh, nice ferrule, three uh, copper coloured rings there. Uh, the shaft, oh yes there we can see that one has got a big R so it's a regular flex. Uh, the grips on these are half cord uh, Victory Green grips. Uh, so although Victory Greens they're not my favourite they tend to become very slippery. These are slippery. The half cord does give you a little bit of grit so I haven't bothered replacing these. So that's the, the four, the six and the eight. Uh, we've also got the pitching wedge and the sand iron here and we can see straight away that these two have had a lot more play than the four iron because the, uh, the copper finish is wearing away particularly on the pitching wedge it looks as though that was a, a used a lot longer than the rest of the set. Uh, the, the sand iron is quite interesting the original set of these wouldn't have, wouldn't have had a sand iron um, but this one has. It's quite a thin sole for a sand iron compare it against the pitching wedge uh, a lot of sand irons would have a much uh, wider sole on them. I think that covers the irons then we'll have a look at the putter next. I have featured this one before as well. This is a, a Norrie Thompson uh, putter, Norrie Thompson Ely 5 Scotland. So if, if you want to look at this one in a bit more detail, the video for that one was called Booty Golf Clubs, or you could search Norrie Thompson, spelt as their N O R R I E T H O M S O N. But it's basically a, a wing back style matching the irons. I don't have a uh, a McGregor wingback putter they do exist but in the UK um, 
I mean, just just finding the uh, the these these irons here, the uh, the remake was hard enough. Finding the originals is even harder. And this is just a, a blade style putter, grooved face, simple ferrule, no shaft band. It's a uh, tapered shaft. We've got no steps on there, and the grip on this one is a very tired Avon Golf Pride Pro only. It says. Oh, that's the putter. Before venturing out onto the course with the clubs, let's take a quick look at the range of MT wingback irons. They first appeared in McGregor's 1950 catalogue, described as a compact iron which has more all-round playability than any other, and scientifically designed with the average player in mind, it is also an iron for which the good player has been looking for years. Here is a three iron of that first design, and here is a 5 iron. Note that one is stamped M85T and one M75T. These codes can be confusing at first, so here's a table with their explanations. We can see that the M85T is a true temper R firm medium stiff shaft for pros and top amateurs. It has a tawny rubber grip and a 38 and a half inch length, which refers to the 2 iron while the M75T is the same apart from the shaft, which is a V medium stiff. In today's terms, these shafts would be stiff and regular, respectively. To confuse things further, the codes did change slightly over time, so here's the 1957 explanations as well. In 1955, the colour chrome finish was introduced by McGregor on their leading clubs. Of course, this included the MT line. Here we can see the addition of the colour chrome name under the tawny name. This changed slightly in 1957 when colour chrome appeared above the tawny name. And here's an example of one such. And this club is a bit of an outlier that I came across when re researching the video. Instead of the alphanumeric code, it has the Tony Penner TP logo. I'm not sure if this was a limited release or something. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, and by the late 1950s, McGregor had new flagship models, and so the MT line was downgraded slightly in the 1958 catalogue and became a signature model for Byron Nelson and Louise Suggs, as shown here. Still sporting the winged MT logo, the winged MT changed in 1960 to this, in my eyes, far less attractive M logo, and it changed again in 1963 to this simple M. Unfortunately, this was the last year that the MT wingback design appeared in McGregor's Proline catalogue, and we had to wait until 20 years later to see the design again in the 1983 remake. And now, a further 40 years on, in 2023, we have the release of the McGregor MT-86 irons. While it's great to see that beautiful wingback design again, a part of me wishes that they'd left it alone, as today's hot-faced, foam-filled, multi-material club is so far removed from the simplicity of the original. But I guess that's why so many of us like to play the originals. And the originals are a lot cheaper. As a great man once said, a little less conversation, a little more action please. So it's time to get these clubs out on the course. As usual, here are the lofts for the clubs and I'll be playing a bogey competition against the course, and I'll be playing the Buzzworld Challenge, where I, buy, I have to nominate a draw, a fade, a high shot, and a low shot. So here we go. It's been a while since I've done an on-course video. Um, today I'm out with the McGregor clubs, as I've shown in the review. Uh, unfortunately, I'm playing absolutely awful golf at the moment, so it's not the best day for me to be doing a, an on-course video. Uh, let's see how it goes. It would appear that it's been so long since I made an on-course video that I've completely forgot how to set the camera up. Here I wander out a shot to play my shot. Luckily it's a pretty good one and the uh, ball lands just on the fringe to give me this putt for a birdie. Just misses but I have got a shot. So that's a par, net birdie and I'm one up. I'm going to try and play a fade here, which is a little bit of a cheat, as I usually fade my woods early on. See, see how it goes. A little bit of a fade. 
is it? Borderline. Decent drive, went 235, it's left me 275, I'm going to hit 5 iron. I told you I've been playing badly recently. What did I mean to say? But now I've got myself in this tricky position. But I actually hit a reasonable shot coming up just shy of the green. First chip for a while on the video. Not great, but I get it on the green. So I need to hold this for a half, but I don't. So that's a bogey and back to all square. I'm going to try a draw here. Well, that was a very nice draw and good distance too. And it left me with a forward to the green, but unfortunately I forgot to film it. And I ended up skying the shot into a bunker on the adjacent hole. I hurriedly played out of there without filming that one to the fringe alongside the green from where I chipped to here. So this was for a half. Never looked like going in. So that's another lost hole and I'm now one down. On to the next hole and I'm playing off the... Uh, Back tee here, the yellows are on the white tee, so a bit further back. And I hit a pretty poor slice, which doesn't go very far, and leaves me with a three wood. And I hit an awful one right out of the heel. Going for a low with the nine iron, and it leaves me 110 yards to go. But I manage a low with the 9 iron, so that's another one ticked off of the challenge. Shot hole on the green in three, two puts for a half. And that put looked like it was going to go in for a long time, but left me an easy tap in for the half. So I remain one down in the match. Six iron. And this was a very nice shot online all the way. Nice shot today. And left me this one for a birdie. It's run by, but it shouldn't be too much trouble holding this one out. And there we go. So that's a par net birdie. Got my draw, got my low, I think I've got my fade. I'm going to try a high with the driver. I didn't really hit this one high enough to count as a high. Not really, and well, I've gone in the bunker. Got to get this one up quick, so I'm going to try high with my 9 iron. Open the face up a bit here, and definitely that one went high. Need to up and down for a win here. I've got just over 80 yards to the back of the green, it's a white flag at the back. I'm going to hit a sand iron. Actually, managed some body rotation on that one, and it ended up quite good. Well, there we are. I've probably got just over 20 feet, tricky put. Bit of a, a slope to go over. Close, but no cigar. Oh, there we are. I think I halved the match. I think I got all my uh, challenge shots in. So with how I've been playing recently, I'm actually very pleased with that. I'd like to ask for some feedback now, please. I've made a few shorts recently as a bit of an experiment. Some were using the actual short format, and some were just short videos of the normal variety. Have you watched any of them? And if so, what did you think of them? And what do you think of the shorts idea in general? Is it worth me doing any more, or do you prefer to see the longer format? Please comment below. 
Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time. Bye.